don't know about the rest of you, but I was really, truly glad, hallelujah, when they said to me, let's go into the house of the Lord. Our feet have been standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your good. O oh Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place, my Lord, where your glory dwells. Mm. Let the words of my mouth and even the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. O sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth sing praises. Amen, amen, amen. Our opening hymn is To God Be the Glory. To God be the glory, great things he has done. So loved he the world that he gave us his son, who yielded his life in atonement for sin, and opened the life gate that all may go in. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the people rejoice. Without further aligning, let us sing this great hymn of the church.
now we want to praise the Lord. We've praised him in song, and now we do what the name of this house is. Jesus said, my house shall be a house of prayer. If you are here this morning and you know there is something you need the prayers for, just raise your hand. Now look about and see the hand of that one that is near you and breathe their name in prayer. Hallelujah. My soul is happy this morning because the Lord has spared me one more time. You don't have to do it. I came right from Dayton to church this morning and I thank the Lord for keeping me on the highways and pastor and others that had to go back home from that high mountain that we've been on for three or four days here. And so God, we thank you today. Lord, you have brought us a long way, some of us. Been on this road a long time. And God, I thank you that you have been a friend and brother. You've been everything we need. You have given us food, shelter, clothing, everything that makes life manageable. And God, I thank you for the hands up raised this morning. You saw what's going on in all of our lives. And you know we need you all the time. I can't think of a time of day or night that I don't need you. And I thank you, God, for the love that's shed abroad in all of our hearts today. We've come into this house to magnify your name and to give you glory, to give you praise, give you honor because you are so worthy of it all. Now, God, I thank you for every pastor, every teacher, every evangelist and missionary that you have anointed to carry the word of God into this world, oh God, that is so troubled now. The land is sick. But we pray, Father, you will somehow, somehow, we don't know how you work all the time, but we know that you are working right now. The homeless are still out there. You said the poor would always be with us, and they surely are. But one of those could have been me. But you did not forsake me because you said to all of your children that you would supply our every need. You just, you didn't miss a beat. You said whatever we need, if it's water, if it's food, if it's medicine, if it's just a sound sleep. And I thank you, God, for these things that sometimes we take for granted. And so I thank you for this worship experience this morning. And I pray even so come, Lord Jesus, as John wrote in Revelation. Because when you show up, as you said you promised to do when we meet in Jesus' name, that our hearts are made glad that we have the comfort of the Spirit. We have the confidence knowing, oh God, that we have he that made everything. We have him as our elder brother this morning, our father, our mother. Everything we need to us is, in, is complete in you today. So I thank you, oh God, as we lift our praise in this place, that you will accept our praise, that you will make our hearts glad that we can clap our hands, dance and shout in the aisles to give you all the praise and glory that you deserve. And God, I pray that you'll search every heart now in this place. There may be something we didn't mention this morning that needs your attention, but you are looking at all the hearts, all the hands up raised. And I pray, Father, that you will send forth the Spirit of God across this waiting congregation this morning and that every heart will meet, meet you, O oh God, to this place today. And that when we leave this place, we will be able to say it was well that we turned out to the house of prayer and we can take the name of Jesus with us, child of sorrow and of woe. It will joy and comfort give us. We take the name of Jesus as we go, and we ask it all in his name. Amen, amen, and amen.
if you want God to hear your prayer, sing with us. Sing with us. Yes. will be read from Psalms, Psalm 150. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his acts of power. Praise him for his surpassing greatness. Praise him with the sounding of the trumpet. Praise him with the harp and lyre. Praise him with the timbrel and dancing. Praise him with the strings and pipes. Praise him with the clash of cymbals. Praise him with the resounding cymbals. Let everything, let everything, let everything that has his mercy, his unmerited favor. To those in the virtual space, we ex extend grace to us. Our internet went down, but give the tech team a hand. They put it together in just a, just a few minutes. We praise God for them and their quick work again. So it is now back online. Praise be to God. At this time, we want to acknowledge any visitors that we have in the house. If you're visiting St. John, if you could stand that we might acknowledge you. Amen, amen, amen. And we have mom in the house, amen, if you could stand. If you would remain standing to our visitors. Indeed, it is a blessing and an honor that God has led you here on today. We pray that our authentic worship and love is a blessing to you as your presence and wonderful spirits have already been a blessing to us. So we want you to sit back and relax and just make yourself at home. But we want to greet you in the name of Jesus with our very own welcome song. We can stand all over the congregation.
virtual space and this is your first time with us, we welcome you to St. John AME Church. For truly the virtual church is a part of our worship. Amen. Now we'll have our sermonic selections. Amen.
see what I see, but I see Sister Lene who was very ill, but she was like, yes, crazy. is on the way but you got to just praise him you got to just trust him we've been worshiping all week long amen we were on fire when we came to church this morning god has been yet good to us as we've been worshiping at planning meeting all week long in dayton ohio even in the virtual space god is yet good He's still your miracle worker. He will go into your hospital room. He'll go into your rehab. He will go into your prison cell. He loves you and he cares for you. And even if it doesn't feel like it, he's got his angels encamped around you and keeping you in all your ways. There is a word from the Lord on today. And we see you in the virtual space, Ingrid and Lisa, Sister Martha, praise God. We are praying for your healing, amen. Reverend Paula, Michelle, we see you in Florida and North Carolina and Georgia and Nevada and California. We see you in New York. We see you. We see you in Georgia. And for that, we are thankful. You could turn with me in your Bibles to Romans chapter 8, starting at verse 34. And then we will go to Daniel chapter 3, verses 17 through 18. If you're in the virtual space, if you could type it in the chat, Romans 8, chapters 34 through when I stop, amen. 34 through 39. And then Daniel chapter 3, verses 17 through 18. And the scripture reads, Who then will condemn us? No one, for Christ Jesus died for us and was raised to life for us. He is sitting in the place of honor at God's right hand, pleading for us. Can 
can anything separate us from Christ's love? Does it mean he no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity or are persecuted or hungry or destitute or in danger or threatened with death? As the scriptures say, for your sake we are killed every day. We are being slaughtered like sheep. No, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us. Church family, I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor demons. Neither our fears for today or our worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And then Daniel chapter 3, verses 17 through 18. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it. And he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But listen, church family. But even if he does not, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold that you have set up. Our subject for this morning is God is still good. God is still, he's still good. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we come before you thanking you ever so much for all that you've done for us. Not because we deserve it, but because you are a loving and kind God. Lord, we thank you for your presence in the house on this morning. We're grateful, oh God, because nothing can happen until you are in the house. Lord, we pray now that you touch me from the top of my head to the bottom of my feet. That this word will be in line with you want for this moment in time. Not that I might be lifted up, God. But these, your children, will have strength, oh God, and encouragement to run on just a, a little while longer that they might be encouraged to make godly decisions in their lives, oh God. And Lord, we're so thankful for your son, Jesus, who suffered, bled, and died on the cross. And he rose again. And he lives on in us, and we are so grateful. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. God is, God is still good. On last week, week, we were at planning meeting in Dayton, Ohio. And one of the retired ministers who came up in her wheelchair gave her testimony. She said that she had suffered several strokes right behind each other, one behind the other. But as she was telling her, her testimony, she kept saying how good God was that every time he allowed her to recover and to be still in her right mind and have the ability to articulate. And I was able to talk to her and she said that even in the midst of sickness, she could see the hand of God in her life. And as she was recovering from the stroke, she found out from her doctors that she would have to go through dialysis. But yet, do you know what her testimony was? God is still good. She said when she began to thought, think about it, she said, why me at first? But then she began to think, why not me? 
She thought about all of the ministry she could do in these uh, facilities as she's getting her dialysis. How many people who have no hope or are saddened and depressed how God could use her to encourage the nurses and the doctors and the patients that were going in. She kept saying God is still what? God is still good. Regardless as to what is going on in your life, you must remember that God is still what? God is still good. You know, as humans, we are limited as to what we can see with our eyes, what is right before us. But we serve a God who can see not just right now, but for an eternity. And we know in our word that God's plans for us are what? Good. They are, God's plans for us are? Good. God's plans for us are? Good. You got to be able to encourage yourself, church family. Yes. There are going to be situations where you are all by yourself. Your internet might drop like I always did this morning. You won't be able to get an email out. Your cell phone may run out of charge. There may be no one beside you, but you must be able to encourage yourself that God is still, no matter what's going on, if you got sickness in your body, God is still, if your phones are looking funny, God is still, if your children are not doing the right thing, God is still, if you don't know if you should go left or go right, God is still, if someone looks at you kind of crazy sometimes, God is still, God is still good. The goodness of God is not dependent upon our individual situations. And the goodness of God is not dependent upon the choices always that we make in our lives. You can be doing all the right things, but yet evil will steal what come and get you distracted and try and get you off target. They're fine, they're fine, they're fine. Whatever they need to do, they're fine. Amen. When I was younger and preaching, my son sat right there with Brother Mayo, right there, and he'd be playing with cars, all doing worship, right? And look now, he's in the tech room working it out. It's all good. They're all good. They're all good. All the time. We have to remember that God is always good. In our text, we find a good and upright man by the name of Daniel who was doing the right things for the right reasons. You know, sometimes we have people doing the right thing, but they're doing it for the wrong reasons. They're checking off their list so they can get a promotion on the job, not really caring about those who they serve. There's some individuals that preach, and, and they preach to get the crowd all excited. And as my uh, preaching teacher said, when they left church, you couldn't tell, remember anything they preached about. Sometimes we're doing things for the, the wrong reasons. But God wants our hearts to be sold out for him and to do God's work for God's reasons. So Daniel was an upright man. He prayed to God three times a day. And regardless as to where he was or whose company he was in, he continued to praise and serve God. You know the story, and he was thrown in a lion's den for his faithfulness. But he didn't walk into that lion's den with a spirit of fear. He went in there with a spirit of faith, knowing that God is still what? God is still good. And he goes in there, and he goes in the lion's den, and he does what he has always done. He continues to praise and lift up the name of God. You know, many had never seen anyone come out of the lion's den before. All that had gone in had literally lost their lives. And so when the king opened up and saw that Daniel was still living, he was amazed. Who is the God that you serve? 
Life will put you in situations in which you feel like you're in a lion's den where there is no way out that you can see. The doctors can give you a diagnosis and say there is no hope at all. On your job, they may say, you know, you, you've reached your plateau, you won't go any higher at all. Your relationship could be such a hard place that you think it will never, ever get better again. But we as Christians have to take our focus off of ourselves and focus on God. We must focus on the problem solver and not the problem. Because what you focus on in life is what you will manifest. So if you focus on negative, it's all going to be what? But if you focus on the positive, it will all be what? Just as God delivered Daniel from the lion's den. He will deliver you from whatever situation you're in that keeps you up all night long. He will make a way out of no way. And God can do it in the twinkling of an eye. You know, you can put your resume together, get all your references together, get your nice suit for your interview. And when God says it's time, it doesn't matter. You can have on blue jeans and a t-shirt, and guess what? You're going to get that promotion. But sometimes we get, we get impatient. We want to get ahead of God. But we have to wait. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, I said, on the Lord. Be of good courage in your waiting, knowing that your change is going to come. And even if it looks like the lion is going to literally eat you alive, know that God has a hedge of protection all around you. And yet they will come from the left and from the right. They'll come with their lies and their trickery. They will come, but yet God won't let them touch your hair on your head because you are his beloved child. So be like Daniel. Keep your hand in God's unchanging hand. Situations will come and situations will go. People will come and people will go. But God is always the same. And he said in his word that he will never he will never, ever leave you or forsake you. So when things happen in your life that you don't understand, tell yourself that God is still what? Good. And if things don't work out the way that you want them to work out, you tell yourself God is still. Good. And even if you can't see on the other side of the darkness that is before you, God is still. Good. You don't have to have all the answers, but all you have to do is just trust God. So if there is one today who is going through something in life, give your problems to God and know that he's going to work it out for you. Pray before you go to sleep and leave it there. Have a peaceful night's sleep. The enemy may throw darts at you, but yet know that they will never land. They're just going to bounce right off. If you keep your hand in God's unchanging hand. And God will give you insight and wisdom that comes only from heaven. It may not make sense to anybody else, but if God says do it, you what? You go do it. There are lives that are depending on you making God decisions in your life. If you work in healthcare, you can't afford a day to be distracted or tired because God wants to use your gifts to heal somebody's body. If you're in education, you can't have a day where you go off on somebody's child. 
You can lose your job in 2023. You got to go walk and just go have a talk with Jesus. Amen. And you got to find creative ways to say no. My son will make you laugh. I'll say, I love the song that you just finished singing. Amen. He said, I wasn't finished yet. I'm like, yeah, I like the song <laughs> that you just finished singing. But give all of your life to God. All of your life. Your work, your finances, your gifts, your time, your marriages. Give them all to God. We celebrate 18 years today. Amen. And ask me if I'm going to cook him dinner. No. I am not. Amen. <laughs> Some things stay the same. Amen. I think he's happy about that too. But give everything you have to God. It belongs to him anyway. It'll be easier making decisions. And so as I close this message on today, remember God, God's still good. He's a healer. Amen. God is, he's still good. Even if you don't understand God, God is still good. Bereavement in your heart, God is what? Still good. Things not working out the way that you planned, God is still good. They didn't sing your favorite song today, God is what? Amen, let us stand all over the sanctuary. A very important time to our time of worship where we invite individuals to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, both in person and also in the virtual space. You know, Mama might have had a relationship with God and Dad might have had one, but you need to have one for yourself. You need a, a church family, a place to use your, your gifts and talents. A place where somebody's going to call and say, I hadn't seen you in a little bit. Are you okay? Amen. A place to use your gifts and talents as we grow in Christ together. And so as our choir and ministry do music, if there is one who wants to give your life to Christ, or join our church family. I invite you to come and give your hand, but give God your heart. Oh, with uplifted voice, let me sing. Oh, y'all don't sound like y'all holding. Hold on to it. All right. Just look at the person beside you and ask them, do you have a church home? place to join.
asked the officers to come for our first table, our stewards and our trustees to come to fill our first table. You that can earnestly repent of your sins and in love and charity with your neighbor and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God, walking from henceforth in his own way, draw near faith and take the sacrament of your comfort and make your humble confession to all that God General Confession, Almighty um, God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against your divine majesty, provoking most justly your wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings, the remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please you in the newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of your great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto you. Have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we shall at all times and in all places give thanks to you. Yes. O Lord, Holy Father, almighty God, everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and their archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your holy name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Glory be to you, O Lord, most high. We do not presume to come to this your table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness but in your manifold and great mercies. We're not worthy so much as to gather the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear son, Jesus the Christ, and to bring, drink his blood that our sinful souls and body may be made clean by his death and washed through his blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of your tender mercy did give your only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his oblation of himself was offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. And then institute in his holy gospel, commit us to continue a perpetual memory of that of his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father. We most humbly beseech you and grant that we receiving these your creatures of bread and wine according to your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. Listen, church family, who in the same night that he was betrayed, 
he took the bread and when he had given thanks, he, he broke it and, and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat. This is my body that was broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink all of it for this is my blood of the New Testament. Yeah which was shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. This is often that you shall drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. The broken body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. His blood that was shed on Calvary with great love for you and for me, I, I drink it by faith. Thank you so much. The broken body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The broken body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. His blood that was shed on Calvary, great love for you and for me. Drink it by faith. His blood that was shed on Calvary, great love for you and for me. Drink it by faith. You may rise, my brother and sister in ministry. body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. If we could have all of the children to go to the back of the sanctuary. The broken body of our Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ. Broken on Calvary with great love for, for you and for me. You are his beloved child. He's been loving on you all the days of your life. You're special to him. He allows his angels to encamp around you and keep you in all your ways. He loves you. He cares for you. He's a healer of all things broken special to him. Before you were formed in your mother's womb, God knew you and God loved you. You may take and eat the bread that was broken in love for you and for me. And now you may take the cup that represents the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Drink it by faith. Now you may rise, my father's children, and take the peace and the love of God with you that surpasses all understanding. And we can now have our children to come. Follow our usher. Yes, you're correct. Yes, sir. I know we often serve our children at the last, one of the last tables. Young lady, come on. Children 
are not the church of tomorrow. They are the church. They are the church of today. This bread broke, represents the broken body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You can go ahead and take it, eat it. God wants you to be a, a good student. He wants you to listen to your parents. He wants you to stay off your cell phone so much, playing games and chatting with your friends. And he wants you to pray just a little bit more. God wants you to keep your room clean and do your homework. And God wants you to always remember that he loves you and that you're special to him. And when your parents ask you to do something, you say, yes, ma'am, and yes, sir, with a beautiful smile and a joyous heart. God wants you to know your parents have feelings too, amen? God loves you. You're so special to him. Study hard in school. It's not, it's not for the teacher, it's for you, amen? Do your best. Pick good friends that are going in the direction that God will have you go. You are beautiful in all your ways because of the greater one who is in you. If you haven't already, go ahead and take your bread. Now we want you to take the cup. And that represents Jesus' blood that was shed for you and for me. Drink it by faith. Reminding you of how much God loves you. We can get the other rows ready to receive communion. You may rise, my father's children, and take God's love with you in good choice. Amen. You're going to go this way. Amen. broken body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, broken for you and for me, broken because God loves us so much, broken because we are special to him. He hears your every cry. He knows all of your needs. He's been loving on you all the days of your life. He has plans for you, work that only you can give. You are special to him. You are his beloved child. God loves you. God cares for you. God is a healer and restorer of all things. You're so special to God. Take that broken.
broken bread and receive it. It was broken out of love for you and for me. And then the cup. Oh, the blood, you may receive it. And allow yourself to be a new creature in Christ. You may rise, my father's children, and take the peace and the love of God with you that surpasses all, all understanding. I believe others may come. He is the forgiver of all of your sins. Don't confess him to man, confess him to God, amen? And he'll let you be a new creature in him. The broken body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Broken for you and for me. For the remission of our sins. That we might be new creatures in him. God wants you to walk in your purpose. He wants you to realize as long as there's breath in your body, there's purpose in your life, you are special to God. Your hands and your mind are anointed by God. He cares for you. He hears your cry, he, he's got angels dispatched just, just, just for you. You are his beloved son. You may receive your bread that's broken, representing the broken body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And then if you would take the cup, and receive his blood that was shed on Calvary with great love for you and for me. Drink it by faith. You may rise, my father's children. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. And take the peace and the love of God with you that surpasses all understanding. And as they leave, others may come. If you're in the virtual space, and if you have bread and water, if you would take your bread now and bless it. And if you would break it, representing the broken body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and then take your water and receive Make it for this your response. It's blood that was shed for you and for me. To whatever he says. Make your confessions unto God, of your body, realizing that he is the forgiver of all of your to sins. The, raising of the, tears, the broken body of our Lord and Savior no Jesus matter Christ. How you feeling, broken on Calvary for you, or your world is real, you and for me standing as fine. The broken body of our Lord spoken, and Savior Jesus Christ. Broken on Calvary say, in love. Say God man. loves you. God cares for you. He hears your every cry. You are his beloved daughter. You are special to God. He anoints your head. Your cup overflows with his goodness and, and his mercy. You are his child. God loves you. And God cares for you. Make this your response. You may take the bread. To whatever he says. And receive.
seated, remembering that from the Christ died on the cross for you. To the and you would take the cup, representing his no blood that was shed. He died a horrible death for you and for me. Boy, your world is really As you drink it, we say thank you and we walk with you. You may rise, my father's children, and take the peace and the love of God with you. you to have prosperity but not like the world wants it he wants it for kingdom building that you might use all that you have to grow the the body of Christ your your one call can transform lives your your one text your your one call your one positive word the bread and receive it now. Realizing that Christ's body was broken for you and for me. And then if you will receive the cup of his blood that was shed at the time for you and for me, drink it by faith. broken body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and blood that was shed on Calvary great love for you and for me we drink it by faith the broken body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ broken on Calvary with love for you and for me we drink it by faith may take and eat the broken body of our Lord and Savior what Jesus Christ. Remembering that it was broken for you and for me. And now you may tuck the cup and drink his blood that was shed on Calvary for each one of us. Drink it and blood. You may rise, my You may rise, my You may rise, my Father's children. But the take the peace and the love of God of with you that surpasses all understanding. Oh, and that leave others may call. Yes. 
things unto God, realizing that He is the forgiver of our sins. That makes the broken body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ broken for you and, no and for me. Take it easy. And His blood that was shed on Calvary with love for you and for me. Jesus. Drink it by faith. You may rise, my Father's children. My sisters and service, thank you so much. Thank you so much for all that you all do behind the scenes on Saturdays, making sure that the table is anointed and set. For that, we are grateful. You may kneel, my father's children, and make your confessions unto God, realizing that he forgives us of all of our sins, as allows us to be new creatures in him. The broken body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, broken for you and broken for me. Broken on Calvary because God loves us so much. You may see, receive your broken bread and then take the cup that represents his blood that was shed on Calvary. As we drink it, let it cleanse our minds and our spirits that we might be more like him. You may rise, my sisters. have a word of prayer our father's prayer together our father that we can share in our giving. You can't beat God giving no matter how you try. And just as sure as you are living and the Lord is in heaven on high, the more you give, the more he will give to you. But keep on giving because it is really true that you can't beat God giving no matter how hard you try. It is offering time 2 Corinthians 9, 6 says this, each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a, a cheerful giver. Your tithes and offering allow us to do the work that God has called us to do. Our food pantries providing food and supplies for those in need, helping families, the various ministries of the church, technology, the universities that are in our, our denominations care. There are several ways that you can give. Cash App, Givelify, Shelby Next, and also the ushers will be coming. God, we thank you for each giver, and we pray for those that do not have to give. But God, we ask that this offering be used for your kingdom building. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
all things come on thee. Let us remain standing. Uh, on this Saturday, we will have our Columbus Springfield Xenia planning meeting at St. Paul AME Church, November 11th, starting at 10 a.m. It is our first planning meeting with our new presiding elder, Reverend Dr. Amy Anderson. All are welcome to attend St. Paul AME Church, which is located on Long Street downtown, 10 a.m. on Saturday. Thank you so much. And now let us praise God from whom all of our blessings flow. as you go through life, remember that there will be situations that happen that are out of your control. There'll be pains in our bodies and people that just don't act right or do the right thing. But know that God is still what? God is still good. You are his beloved child and they can throw axes and stab and do all things, but God will have a hedge of protection around you. And yet you will not fall. So keep your hand in God's changing hand. Pray for your family, pray for situations, but then go to sleep at night, knowing that you have put it in the best hands possible. Remember to check on your brothers and sisters in Christ. You are the miracle that somebody's looking for. Your text, your phone call can make all the difference in the world. May God's grace, may his mercy, may his peace that surpasses all understanding be a part of your life and of your life, Emma, and of your life. Be a part of, of your life and of your life in the virtual space. Let all God's children say, Worship God and now let us depart to serve God's world. Amen. <laughs>